Ear Candy with Troy and Monty on the Fox. Troy, something happened to me this afternoon, which is straight out of the movies. Mm -hmm. It was so bizarre, it's straight out of Hollywood. I was uh, in a restaurant eating lunch with a friend of mine. (laughs) You're setting the scene for me. It was a stormy evening. (laughs) My phone rang, right? And uh, I didn't know what the number was. So I answered my phone with the, hello? That's yeah. my hello when I don't know who the person is. If it's someone that I know, it's usually a yo or something stupid because I'm an idiot. So I start with my inquisitive hello and I get a hello, Dan. It's a girl's voice. Uh-huh. And I go, uh, no, it's not Dan. You might have the wrong number. And she says, oh, who's this? Now, at this point, something strange happened. I noticed I was not only hearing this girl's voice through the phone, but I could also hear her in the restaurant. What? And I think she noticed this as well. Enter act two. (laughs) (laughs) I turned my head really slowly to the table immediately next to her, and I saw this girl as confused as I was with a phone in her hand just looking at me, and still with phone to ear, I said, am I on the phone to you? (laughs) And she said, yes, who are you? Now, this is confusing for all involved. Let me take you back to the previous evening, the Saturday night, ooh, okay? Oh, slow down, Pulp Fiction. Big Pulp Fiction, <laughs> right? So my friend Dan, who this girl thought I was, this girl's name was Sarah. He okay. was out. He had met this girl, Sarah, at a bar and was chatting to her and stuff. You know, they chatted for a while. Now, I was not there. I was not out with my friend Dan. I didn't know what he was uh... doing. Now, look, I don't know what happened. I don't know what possessed my friend to do this, but look, it happens. Guys have done it. Girls have done it. Girls have done it more than guys. Everyone's done it. (laughs) Slip that one in there. (laughs) My friend Dan gave her a fake number. He obviously didn't feel a connection with this woman and never wanted to speak to her again. All right, look, it happens, okay? He's done the oldest trick in the book and he's thrown her a fake number, but he must have panicked when he was giving the fake number and gave my number for some reason. Now, I'm pretty sure when he thought of this, he didn't think. That does happen, though, because he, might, he must know yours off by heart. So yeah. when, you, when you go to make one up, it's harder than if you actually know one. Exactly. Yeah. So he's obviously just given mine out. What are the chances, Kinney, this girl <laughs> would ring my mate Dan while I'm sitting in the restaurant next to her? I've never met her before. This is pure coincidence. So we're in this Hollywood moment, right? We're looking at each other, and Dan probably thought that I'd get a call from this girl or something and I'd, I'd figure it out and he'd get him off the hook somehow. But I'm sure he didn't anticipate this twist of fate, okay? So, <laughs> I mean, this girl started laughing. She was all right about it. She realised what had happened. She'd got a fake number. Fine, she can deal with it. But we thought we're not going to let him get away with it. So, in an appropriate Hollywood ending to this scenario, I said to the girl, I tell you what, why don't you ring Dan off my phone and he will lose his mind. <laughs> So we put my phone on speakerphone. I rang Dan. He answers, yo, because he thinks it's me. (laughs) Cue Sarah. Hi, Dan. It's Sarah from last night. Oh, oh. you have never heard so many ums and ahs and backpedaling in my life. Hollywood couldn't write redemption like that. Sounds like you and this chick got on well. Did you give me your number? So I should expect a call? I I gave her your number. (laughs) You were there, Candy on the Fox.